looking at my plate Wishing that my veggies could change to chocolate cake Yeah, but then I saw something that chilled me to the bone My asparagus started singing into a microphone And he said, hey, kid, you better be careful the way that you're looking at me Don't you know that I'm the one who keeps you strong and husband? That's the Veggie Blues, written by Amy Lacey and sung by Andy Dodge. Anyway, that's on our Fly Kids CD. And when I, when I ask for a song to be written about vegetables, <laughs> oh my, I'll never forget it. I said, you know, I think if we could just have a, a song that talks about baby trees in the song. And you know, they put it in there, baby trees, because I love broccoli. I really, I have grown broccoli. That wasn't so much fun, but I like broccoli to eat. I actually had it last night for dinner and it, it's just, it makes me happy. Broccoli makes me happy. So have you been having the veggie blues and not wanting to eat your vegetables? Now I'm not big on fruit, don't get me wrong. I just read a chapter in, in Dr. Bosworth's book. Uh, I can't even think of the name of the book. I don't have the book. I have it on my Audible account and on Kindle. But it, it, it was, fruits are evil. Yes, fruits are evil because <laughs> they, they have so much sugar in them. They just have so much sugar in them. And I can't have sugar right now. I'm testing my blood sugar twice a day. Um, I'm working toward getting rid of the sugar that has been stored in my liver. And I've got to stay consistent on my, my eating. So yesterday, now this is, yesterday when I pulled the little message out of my wise old owl for us to talk about, it was, it, we talked about, we talked about, um, Somebody saying they're growing broccoli now. Well, I have to talk about the time I grew broccoli. I grew broccoli and drew, grew some beautiful broccoli. And then I brought it in the house to put it, put it in the freezer. And you have to blanch vegetables before you put them in. So you get a pot of boiling water and you put the vegetable into the boiling water. And I put 
the broccoli into the boiling water just for a minute or two and you take it out and then you get it cold and you stop the cooking process these little green worms came out on top and you know I threw it all away I wasn't gonna spray it with chemicals but I wasn't going to take the chance of eating a little green worm either. So I threw it all away. It was awful. I almost died. So I have a question. When do I clip my pumpkin? The plants are dead now. Uh, you could probably clip your pumpkin right now. I mean, I don't know much about pumpkins. I've never grown pumpkins. But when the vine dies, the the there's nothing feeding the pumpkin anymore so i would i would get it off the ground put it on the porch just put it on the porch anyway or cook it cook it cook it cook it let's just say fruit for me is evil you know adam adam was was eve was tempted by an apple so fruit is evil that's a chapter in dr dr boz's book so, uh, it's, it's really, uh, it was quite funny. It was quite, quite funny. When you're trying to get your blood sugars down, anytime you eat fruit, you're going to have, your body's going to put out insulin and it's going to try to fight the sugar. And you've got sugar stored in your liver if you have a fatty liver. And I'm learning so much stuff from her. I'm learning from Leanne too. So, we come up with a plan. We have a new uh, blood glucose monitor coming that we're going to be testing our blood sugars and our ketone levels. So, yep, Jan, I do believe that fruit is evil, especially when you eat it in abundance. When, I mean, just the fact that one apple has 26 grams of sugar. I have reduced my carb intake from 30 to 20 now, and maybe even lower than that. So, I'm working to reduce the sugar in my body. And when I put something like that in my body, it's not good for me. It is not good for me. So that for me is evil. So that's a, another reason why fruit is sparing in our environment. Fruit trees only, they're, they're not consistent. You can go green, you can grow greens all year long, but fruit only comes to maturity once a season. Once a season, strawberries in the early spring, uh, blueberries in midsummer, then you've got apples and, and different things in, in the fall. So Robert loves his peaches. He absolutely adores his peaches, but a peach is, is all pretty much all carbs. And somebody that's diabetic and pre-diabetic doesn't need to put that sugar in their body or they're going to have to produce something, give themselves a shot of insulin or whatever. So I'm learning lots of things from, from her book and somebody post the name of her book in here. Leanne post the name of her book because it's, it's about her, her mother. The, the book was, she set on this, on this doctors, believe it or not, doctors are not taught anything are not taught anything about nutrition. Nothing, 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 nothing. And unless you have studied nutrition like Leanne has to the point. Now, two, three weeks ago, Leanne grew us some broccoli sprouts. I mean, those things are amazing. I never thought I would love the taste of broccoli sprouts and it's just added nutrition to your food and I, I just I couldn't get over how how wonderful that so I have ordered onion sprout onion seeds for chives I've ordered radish seeds because I like the taste of a radish and I've ordered um, mustard seeds so I may make me a little planter of, of mustard greens and grow them all winter long so that I have, you know, Teresa, they only have to have these fruits and things because they're taking medication. 
because they're taking medication that drops their blood sugar too low. If you look back and, and read this book, back in 1915, they didn't have insulin for people. They didn't have medication and they controlled their diabetes with diet. Imagine that. They controlled their diabetes with diet. And th this, this book is just is eye-opening. It's as, it's as powerful to me as the book Leanne gave me, um, what, about a, nine years ago on why we get fat. It was just powerful. It's, it's an eye-opening. I'm going to read it three times. I'm going to finish it in a couple of hours and I'm going to read this book three times. I want to get every, every little tidbit of information in my mind. I want to, I, I, I'm, I'm go, we're going to promote her book. I mean, she has done some amazing work with this book and she cites other studies of athletes using ketosis to heal their bodies. You know, sometimes the best thing you can do for your body is to quit eating. Quit stuffing it full of crap. And she talks about going on that scavenger hunt that Leanne and I have talked about. Uh, is going on the scavenger hunt and getting everything out of your pantry that has carbs in it. Everything. But she also talks about, you know, craving sugar. I mean, sugar is one of the most addictive substances in the whole wide world. It's crazy. And we have it in our house. Yesterday, I was cleaning off my kitchen counters and I picked up my sugar bowl. Yeah, I have a sugar bowl. It had about a quarter cup of sugar in it. It was all hard and crusty from the summer because I hadn't touched it all summer. And I just dumped it in the sink and put it in the dishwasher and... I'm not going to put sugar back in it. I'm not going to put sugar back in it. Nope. So I was just now listening to a chapter on um, fasting. Her, her mother had gotten diverticulitis. And she was, her her bowel was totally shut off. And they had to go on a fast and so her daughter went on the fast with her and I have fasted before for religious reasons during Lent but it was also for health reasons because I had read uh, Jason Fung's book on on fasting and it is a an amazing book it, it's it he really taught Patty and I a lot about and and Leanne about fasting and the benefits of fasting. Sometimes your body just needs to rest. You remember when when we were kids and we went swimming and our our parents would tell us you can't go in the water for 30 minutes after you eat. And and you always wondered, well what's that all about? Well, your body's busy digesting the food you put in it. And it going, I mean, I intermittent fast every single day because that's how my, my metabolism, I guess, works because I'm not hungry during in the morning. I'm not hungry for, I'm not, I'm my body. And it's probably because I have too much sugar in my body that I'm not hungry. And once I get declutter my pancreas as Bobby told me the other day I, once I once I get rid of that excess sugar that's in my fatty liver and what I learned from Dr. Bosworth yesterday last night is that your body your cells in your liver increase to hold the sugar that your insulin can't get rid of so it absorbs that sugar into the cells and holds on to it. When insulin comes around, it turns, it locks all the doors to the cells, which like was this light bulb moment for me. 
I mean, a major light bulb moment that just really said, okay, I eat dinner. I eat too much sugar at dinner, which I didn't last night. I did not. I did have some blue cheese dressing on a wedge salad. But, you know, it's Friday night. It was date night. Robert picked that we would go to Old Charlie's. Well, Old Charlie's, and we got there a little earlier than we like to do for dinner, but Friday nights are crazy. So we got there about 5.30, 20 till 6, and we got seated right away. And I decided I wanted the prime rib. I was hungry for beef. I had fasted all day long. I had one cup of bone broth. And that's essentially a fast. And I ordered the wedge salad purposefully because I knew I would have to slice the lettuce and take a bite and slice the lettuce and take a bite. <laughs> and I'm trying to be mindful. Leanne and I have come up with... Um, this is funny, y'all. This is so funny. Let me get a piece of paper. If I if I made jewelry, I would make me one of these. Let me find a piece of paper. Leanne, what was your quote for last night? She said, mindful, mind, it was four M's. Mindful meals. Write it down, Leanne. I can't remember. But anyway, it was four M's, and it reminded me of, of a flower, and I'm drawing it right now, but imagine having a flower that looked like four M's on your finger, right here, a ring on your finger. Just this, this is flower. Maybe it's not a tat. I said we should tattoo this on our hand, but it's a flower to remind us to be mindful. Mindfulness makes meals meaningful. Oh, I love it. Four M's, four M's, like four H's from from Four H Club. When we're this is four M's. Being mindful of our meals and understanding that. Leanne and I both need, we have Robert and Mark who, who eat slow. Last night, Robert finished his meal eight minutes before I did. Imagine that. That has never, ever happened before. I had broccoli. I had salad and I had this wonderful piece of rare. I like rare steaks. And I, I had to cut it. I had to chew it. I had to put my fork down. I was being mindful with every bite I took. So, <laughs> here's, here's the next thing. Yesterday afternoon, you know, we have new topics. I didn't, I didn't make these topics. I did not come up with this list of topics. Y'all did. And Liz and Patty put them together. I have, it's taken me several days to get them all printed out and cut up into my wise old owl and my teapot. I pulled, I pulled a topic out of the a wise old owl yesterday. And it was about sitting down to the dinner table eating as a family. Well, one of our faithful members couldn't listen to the show yesterday because she wanted to go to Target or some store and get some beautiful things for her table. Beautiful dishes, beautiful placemats, napkins. She wanted to make her table more inviting because they had been practicing the habit of sitting down to their meals and having them together. And her son really liked to toast things, so she got plastic goblets. Imagine that. And she missed the show yesterday, and she posted on the, the Hot Melt Sprint group what was Fly Lady's topic yesterday afternoon. We missed it. 
And she was just blown away that my topic was what she was doing. So think about being mindful when you eat. Every bite is precisely cut. Every, every bite is chewed properly. Every bite, you're, you're feeling the flavor. It's like drinking a cup of coffee or drinking a cup of tea, savoring every bite. And what this does, your stomach tells your head you're full. I didn't eat everything on my plate last night. I left some broccoli. I left some salad. I left some, some of the beef. And it being mindful of every bite you put in your mouth. Now, when you're raised up in a family that doesn't have a whole lot of food, a lot of times you eat fast just to get just to make sure you get some food i grew up in a big family and mother we never had meals as a family ever ever except when we were at granny's house so sitting down to eat and eating your meals as a family is a powerful way to teach your children manners to teach your children how to set the table to teach your children how to eat properly because there's nothing worse than sitting across from someone at dinner and they've got their mouth open, chewing haphazardly, food flying everywhere, trying to talk with a mouthful of food. That's just disgusting. And when you eat out as much as I do, you see a lot of this. You And putting your fork down, taking sips of, of your, your beverage, not gulps, Sips. Sips. Because you're not, if you put too much liquid in your tummy for dinner, it, it defeats the purpose. Because digestion has to take place. So, I'm coming up to the realization that I need a meat, I need a veggie and I need a salad. And this is what we did last week. This is why we're going to reiterate every week, every month in zone two, we're going to get back to basics, a meat, a vegetable and a salad. Just that simple. Just that simple. I noticed over the last couple of months as, as we've been, um, practicing our low carb eating that when Robert and I would go to our our local Irish pub they have some really good food there and Robert likes to go there that when I had salmon a salmon and salad I always lost weight because it doesn't have sauces and stuff on it I went to eat Chinese I gained two pounds because there's sauces on everything Everything's fried or there's been a added sugar to it. I'm learning. I am learning what I can and what I, if I go to the Japanese restaurant, I can have their scallops and shrimp with broccoli and I'm happy. No rice. I mean, a cup of rice is 45 grams of carbs. Do you know how many cups of rice they put on your plate at those things, at, at those restaurants? Two cups or more. Two cups or more. So learning the carb count on the things you're eating is important. And getting it stuck in here, knowing you can't have that, and doing research before you go to a restaurant. Doing research, knowing what's what the carb count is on things. And you can do that easily 15 minutes before you walk out the door if you're going to a restaurant. You can look at things. I only request broccoli. I don't want all the other vegetables because they're too weepy. And I end up wearing, I end up dressing up the girls with drips. So that, 
that irritates me. Well, folks, it's Saturday, and we're sitting here talking about food. But guess what? Maybe it's got you thinking about having dinner at, at home tonight and setting a lovely table for your family. You know, it's still good weather out, and it's tailgating time and football season, and it's always something fun to do on, on a Saturday in the fall. And we're getting up on baseball time, and I watch a lot of baseball in the fall when it's, um, it's always fun. But think about setting your table. And, and tomorrow's Sunday. You can have a wonderful meal. You can, you know, get something out of the freezer right now and put it in, in your slow cooker and for tomorrow morning and get it done. And then tomorrow evening you can have, or you can put it in the slow cooker tonight. I mean, really slow cook something and have a wonderful meal tomorrow at, after, after church. So folks, I've got my warm cup of coffee here. I think I might put on a jacket because it's cold in the house. Again, well, anytime you can watch a good baseball game and root, you know, you can root for, for good plays. You don't have to, if your team's not winning, you don't have to beat the other team up. And I am, uh, I am not a, f a fair weather sports fan. I support the St. Louis Cardinals. I always have. But I always pick a team I'm for when I'm when the World Series rolls around in playoffs. Anyway, y'all have a good day. I'll see you at three o'clock. Leanne will be on here at one o'clock. And we are rocking and rolling and learning so much stuff. Learning so much stuff. And anytime you can learn something new, this is a good day. Anytime you can learn something new. And my blood sugar was really down yesterday, this morning from yesterday morning. I mean, almost 30 points. So this is, a, this is good. I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. I can't wait till my blood sugar is 85. Less than 100. That's going to be a good day. And I will shout it from the roof that this, there's my friend, Eric. Tell Andy I just played his veggie blue song. Anyway, here's to having a good day and knowing that you're learning something new every single day and setting up systems, establishing simple habits, stringing them into routines that become a system for your house automatically cleaning itself. And yes, it will. It really will. If you will allow these habits to flow right over you. I love you all. I will see you later.